And we thank you for this day. As we gather to praise your praise you praise you and honor you this morning, we want to thank you for all your many blessings. And we invoke your blessings upon this service and upon your servant Pastor Don, who will lead us in your holy word, that we may share your good news with others and bring honor and glory to your name. We ask this in your name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Announcements, there's quite a few here. First of all, board meeting today right after services, so board members, if you can, please stay for the board meeting. Uh, Wednesday night Bible study, 7 p.m. We're studying how to study the Bible. It's very interesting. Please come join us. Plenty of seats. And Sunday school, which is at 9, 8, 9.30 a.m., which started this morning. Uh, we've started a new uh, lesson, lesson number two, God uses Rahab. Remember Rahab, she's helping out the spies in Jericho. Uh, again, very interesting uh, event in history. Please come join us. Uh, let's see, uh, rescue bags, coats, jackets, sweaters, and socks are needed. And uh, we still have the, uh, the uh, rescue bags, I guess, uh, available. Right, Clint? Yeah, all right. And food, food baskets are available. And again, call the church. We will prepare the food basket for you, but you need to come pick it up. And uh, let's see. And then there's Christmas baskets, which will be passed out December the 19th. And I believe you need to uh, contact in advance and resolve well, We've pretty well got a list of what we need okay. or uh, who's getting them. But if anybody wants one that didn't get a Thanksgiving one, I need to know. Okay. So please let Pastor Don know, one of the elders, that if you need a Christmas basket, let us know in advance. So we can prepare it for you. And again, you need to come pick those up. Well, Jose, it'll have to be this week because next Saturday is the 19th. Yep. Okay. You guys heard her. It has to be this week. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, don't forget to take a name from the prayer box back there. And again, uh, God wants us to pray for one another. Uh, it gives him glory and honor. And uh, again, for those who are homebound, uh, you know, please give them a call. You, we all have a directory, including the people that are homebound there in computer land. Uh, call us as well. You know, God wants us to stay in touch with one another, to assemble and get together, even though we have to do it through, through, the, uh, through technology. But please, stay in touch with one another and pray for one another. Um, let's see, a uh, new website for information and sermon. It's the BoleynChristian.GoDaddySites.com. It's on your bulletin there. And the sermons are still available on the back table over there. Uh, also on YouTube and live on Facebook. Several ways to get the sermons. Uh, and remember to greet new faces and welcome them to God's house. And let's see. Uh, Christmas Eve service, December the 24th at 6 p.m. Food to follow. Okay, and then starting December the 27th, the last week of this month, will be Contemporary Music Sunday. And I believe I got them all. Any other announcements? If not, then the Chadwicks will be doing the at them. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. today. Thank you. 
morning, everybody. Good to see you here. Today's sermon is going to be on love, as it is during this time of season. We try to preach on faith and joy and peace and love, and this week it's on love. And we kind of have a tendency to narrow things down this time of year to uh, just the birth of Jesus and this sort of thing, but we have to remember why this happened. And this happened because God's purpose was to love the human race and give it opportunity to spend eternity with Him from day one. And He has made everything possible for this time of year to come, come upon us and for the birth of Christ. So I want to look at today a little bit about why and how and what we're supposed to do with this love that God has showed us as an example by giving His Son to us during this Christmas season to become man and God and to be obedient to His will and to save us from our sins. He had promised this from the time of Eve that there would be a Messiah to come. He reiterated this throughout all of the kings of Israel that their line would end up with a king uh, and a line that would never be dethroned and that it would come to take away the sins of the world. And it was because of this love that God had for his creation that we're here today. Because how many times in the Old Testament have we studied that it would have been really simple just to squash that and start over again. I mean, with between Adam and Eve and Noah and all of the other times that his chosen people turned on him, that he said, you know what? Let's just start over. But he never did. He kept his promises, and he kept his covenants. And here we are today with the promises fulfilled, with the Gentiles grafted into the Jewish branch, with us becoming the bride of Christ together, just as he always intended. But we're going to look at a few things today on love, and we're going to start out in 1 John today, right before 2 John, 3 John, and Jude Revelation. We are going to look at chapter 4, and we're going to look at verses 8 through 11. And we're going to find out really what love is all about, and why we have that love that we see from God today. So 1 John 4, 8 through 11 starts out with, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us, and sent His Son to be pro propitiation, I always get that wrong, for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Now we went over these verses a few weeks ago in a sermon in a different light, but what we really want to look at here is the only reason that we're here today praising the Lord for Jesus coming onto this earth is because of these verses. It wasn't because of our great love for him that he did that. It was his great love for us. He loved us before we loved him. He kept his purpose from the time he told Eve that he would raise up one to crush the serpent's head. He kept that promise clear up until the time that Jesus was born. This is something that we need to take a really vested interest in because if God is love and we don't believe in God, where does that put us? If God is love and we don't give Him the gratitude for it, where does that put us? If we don't use that love that He has for us and live within that love and spread it around and love each other, where does that put us? We live in a time and day right now to where we've seen over this past year especially huge divisions among people. Love was not running rampant through those divisions regardless of what they were, whether they were political or racial or anything else. Love was not the talking point. The talking point was who was right. 
And whether or not we chose a side or agreed with a side or did whatever, if we did not do that through the eyes of God's love, we did wrong. Because God said in John 3.16, He sent His Son for the whole world. <clears throat> not to condemn it, but that the world through Him should be saved, the next verse says. If we have fallen into the trap, and I know it's a wearing thing over years, two years, four years period of being trained to basically by the media or by whatever to think a certain way whether it be about COVID, whether it be about politicians, whether it be about whatever. We have a tendency to fall into that trap of thinking, well, that's what everybody thinks, so it must be right. Don't fall into that trap. No matter how many people do a certain thing, if it's wrong, it's still wrong. Quantity does not create righteousness. We have to keep in mind that we, as the chosen people of God, we as those who have promised to follow Him and have asked for eternity with Him and received His salvation, have a duty to perform. And that is to show love to everyone. Because that's who God is. We cannot say that we are being a witness for Jesus if we don't show the love of God. Then all they are is words. As Paul say, you know, I could do all those things, but it's this tinkling brass and sounding cymbals if love isn't involved. Then it could be considered persecution. It could, could be considered judgment. People don't respond well to either one of those. Our job is to show the love of God. If you will, go up to verses 16 to 19. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If we don't dwell within God's love, how are we going to share it? If we are fearful, as it says here, of the things around us more than we fear God, where does that put us? We had this story in Sunday school this morning of Rahab a citizen of Jericho, a harlot who lived on the wall but heard of God and made a choice, that's who I want to serve in whatever way I can. And her house was saved from the destruction of Jericho and became part of the lineage of Jesus. The love of God can overcome the world. If we take His love and we show it through us, then we show the world who God is. But we have this untoward fascination with basically showing the world who God is not. Because we're selfish, and we're lazy, and we're arrogant, and we think we can do it on our own. And all of those things will bring us short of the glory of God. Love in this season seems to be something we strive for because of the babe in the manger. But you know what? If we don't show the love that that babe in the manger represents, which is God giving up his only son to come here onto this earth, we're missing the point of the story. God has told us if we don't love our brothers, and how do we love him? Because he loves our brothers. How do we become part of the family of God if we don't take advantage of that great love? We have to make a point of, make a decision to 
love each other. And yeah, I know that's hard sometimes. Even within our own family, that's hard sometimes. But loving one another and liking one another can be two different things. We may not like what somebody believes or what they stand for or what they do. But as God's creation, we are commanded to love them for the potential of their being a child of God. And we will get, as they say, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. You have to be appealing with our God. And the only way we can show our God is appealing to the world is to show His love. That they too, and we too, can share in that together. And if we have nothing else in common, we have that. That's how strong marriages are built. You may grow apart here on this earth, but if you have Jesus in common, you always have that common ground. And He can fill in those gaps for you. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians backwards a little bit. These verses are usually used in a lot of weddings and all things like this. And, but they're verses on how to live in love. What to do, what not to do, how to act and how not to act. And it's 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Paul has written this to Corinth because they had become a little hard-hearted in their message. They had developed the legalistic approach. They had developed the it's only us and not you approach. Uh, they had become exclusive instead of inclusive. They were looking more upon the works they could do and the gifts they could get and the things that were there than they were for the reason that they were a church in the first place. And we find this out there all day long in churches. It's all about the church and not about the people that make up that church. Chapter 13 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, also love, I am becoming a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And you know, when we get to that point, to where we speak without love, it no longer becomes encouragement. It becomes judgment. It no longer becomes helpful criticism. It just becomes flat out criticism. People don't respond well to that. Churches break up because of that. Well, they said, he said, she said this. Yeah, but I know it was supposed to be, but the tone of voice they used, we've got to watch that. Remember, Paul says, tongue may be one of the smallest members, but it's the most powerful. It can be the most destructive. And if we don't speak from the heart, and our heart is not in tune with God and His love, sometimes we say things that don't come out just quite like we meant, or like they should have. And when that happens, people's feelings get hurt. When people's feelings get hurt, Satan starts working on it. And the next thing you know, that anthill has become the mountain. You lose membership, you lose friendships, you lose camaraderie, fellowship in the church, because of something that really just doesn't matter. Because it wasn't spoken in love to somebody. If you get a preacher up front that all they do is bang on you for your sins. Here's what you should do, here's what you should do, here's what you should do. And again and again and again. After a while, as he, as he says there, you become either a clashing of symbols to where people just tune you out. Or a tinkling of bells that people just go along with. If you don't get an answer for the problems through love and the scripture, we're doing it wrong. We're not up here, preachers and teachers, <clears throat> to tell you how wrong you are in your sin. Because we're all in this together. 
I've told you many times, most of my sermons are preached to myself first, and then I just share my sins with the rest of you. <laughs> and that's how it should be. I'm nothing special when it comes to God's eyes, because he doesn't look at the importance of men or their positions. He looks at the heart. I'm as liable as you are for everything that is done but held to a higher account because I'm the one up here telling you about it. So it's up to you guys to keep me in line, right? If I get out of line, that's what I got elders for. That's why I've got deacons. That's why we have an open congregation that people can come to the pastor and say, hey, wait a minute here. You've preached on this seven times in a row after I told you that I was doing this and that's enough. We have to teach love, compassion, forgiveness, letting go. And we have to practice all those things. All of us do. Because we can't move forward while we're still hanging on to those anchors behind us. We can't mature while we're holding on to the childish hurt feelings and the childish misinterpretations or the childish pride. We're just going to stay still. And it's going to fester. We need to move on with the way we look at things. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, and I have not charity, I am nothing. <clears throat> and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long <clears throat> and is kind. It envieth not. It vaunteth not itself, nor is puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. And it thinks no evil. It rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Charity or love never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. And whether there be tongues, they shall cease. And whether there will be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, and I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then, face to face. Now I know in part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. Without love, you're a detriment to your witness. You're a detriment to God's word. You're a detriment to each other and to me and I am to you. If we don't love each other, then we're a bunch of people sitting here judging each other's works. That won't get us to heaven anyway. We're a bunch of people here who are trying to be literally holier than thou. That's not going to get us to heaven either. We are a bunch of people not encouraging one another to do better, but rather saying, well, at least I'm not that bad. That's the easy one to go with. <laughs> That's not our purpose. That's not our life, as he described it here. If someone says something to you that you take offense to, take the high road. Receive it in love as well as tell it. Take for granted that they meant it in love instead of looking for a problem. God's love should dwell within us going both directions. Our lifestyle should be dependent upon his love and our love for him that wants us to share Martin was showing me earlier a passage in Luke 
It says, you know, people are going to go all different ways to try to find and please God. We've got religions happening all over the world. All of them think they're trying to strive for eternity and please God. And yet, unless you go through Jesus Christ, you're going to have all those people saying, what? Well, but I lived a good life. I was honest. I raised good children. I gave money to the poor. I did all of this stuff. And they forgot to ask for Jesus. We have to keep in mind that God's love is what gave us that opportunity through Jesus to enter into eternity with him. Last verse we're going to go to is back to John 3.16 that we read at the beginning of the service. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I want to read the next two verses as well. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This to the world is our message. This is why you see it on everybody's eyelids and at football games and the signs and all of this. John 3.16 basically explains salvation to people and why it's there. It says, for God so loved the world. He didn't just pick out somebody in the desert. He didn't just pick out somebody over here. And didn't just pick out somebody over there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's everybody. Those we like, those we don't like, those that we think are our enemies, those that we think that are our arch enemies. God so loved the world that he did this. This babe in the manger at this time of the season is God's prophecy fulfilled, his promise come to pass that for all the world I have now given you what you've been waiting for. I have given you my son whose blood will take away the sin of the world. And all you have to do is the verse says, believe on him that you should not perish but have everlasting life. People have a tendency to look at the birth of Jesus as God sending somebody to judge the world. That's not why he came during that first time, was not to judge the world. It was not to condemn the world. The world was already condemned. Since, it was, since Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, the world was condemned. Men were born into sin. There was no way out. Jesus didn't have to come condemn it. We had already done that but that the world through him might be saved. It's still true today. Because of God's love, him loving us first, he sent us the answer. He said, here it is. Here's my sacrifice to you. It's my son. He was obedient to the death of the cross. His blood changed everything. It took all that sin that had come up for 3,000 years. He shouldered it all. He shouldered the sin of his time and of our time in the future and became sin for us. He became our appropriation, as it's called. He became our substitute on the cross because he knew none of us, no matter what we did, could ever pay for our sin. He took the sin of the world and forgave it. He took it away. He made it to where we didn't have to work and do our best and fail in our attempt to get to heaven. Instead, he said, instead, let me do the work, take my hand, and let me bring you to me. Accept what I've done. Confess your sins and ask for my forgiveness and I'll give it to you. Guaranteed. I don't care what you've done. 
I don't care what your past is. Remember our story this morning of Rahab the harlot. She was forgiven everything. She became an Israelite and was in the lineage of Jesus Christ himself. Next generation, Ruth was a priestess from Midian. She came in way back in that era God was showing them that the Gentiles will be included. All they had to do is believe in the one true God and His love. All we have to do is believe in the one true God and His love and the path He laid out for us to join Him in eternity. It's simple to say the words. A little more difficult to believe in your heart. But understand, this is a culmination 5,000 years of God's work and love for us is to be able to accept His Son as our Savior. Open to anyone at any time the way to heaven. So this year, during this Christmas season, as we celebrate the presence of the trees and the stars and all this sort of thing, let's just keep in mind that without that babe in the manger, through God's love, it didn't mean anything. It's as Paul said, without that love, the crashing of symbols, nobody's going to pay attention. And we see that happening. So keep it alive in our hearts. Keep God's love alive through Jesus, through the babe in the manger. And remember the reason for the season. Remember why we do these things in celebration for our ability to spend eternity with God, for the obedience of His Son, for the obedience of Mary, for the obedience of all of these that have come in line to say, we believe this is going to happen. And when it did, they accepted it. We're in the same boat now with the second coming. We know it's going to happen, and we're starting to see the prophecies fulfilled. Karen sent me a little YouTube blurb on the fourth country that is now joined in the Abrahamic Covenants, Morocco. Trump signed the papers on that three days ago. Nobody ever heard about it. But that's a fourth nation now that has given peace to Israel, recognized them as a country and have an embassy there now. That's an Arab nation. This is the beginning of that peaceful time before the world starts turning against Israel totally and the Antichrist arises. Prophecy is coming true in our day and time, folks. We need to pay attention to it. We need to support it. We're not looking to change the end times. We're looking to persevere through them and to still be good witnesses for Jesus. So, Keep our spirits up during this time. It's going to be a different Christmas, just like it was a different Thanksgiving. We're not going to be able to go places we want to go or see the people we want to see personally. But again, maybe it's a good thing that we're able to withdraw a little bit from the world and get out of the hubbub of the buying and the <coughs> presents and all of this and remember who that babe in the manger is, why he was there, and what he did for us. Just stand as we close. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for keeping your promises, for sending us Jesus as that babe in the manger to be human and God. We thank you for his obedience and the shedding of his blood so that we can become heirs and co-heirs with him. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that convicts us, that tells us when we fall away from your love, when we should get back in it. Give us the strength and determination to pay attention to that. To take the high road on things. To give the gentle answer. To have forgiveness in our hearts. To love without ceasing. We pray, Lord, now that you bless us as we continue to sing your praises. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.
for communion, I'd like to read from Acts, and I'll read chapter 2, verse 41 through 47. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continually daily, with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Let's pray. Mighty God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you again for being our God. In partaking of this communion, we remember your son Jesus and what he did on our behalf, giving everyone the opportunity of a new life through him. And for those who believe, the promise of an eternal existence with you in heaven. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone. How's the sound, Tony? Okay, good. Hope my voice will hold up okay. Well, it's winter time, but the sun is shining. Hallelujah. I do like that. I'm a sunshine guy. This is our praise and prayer time. So please join with me as we continue this part of our service. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful again for this special day you provided for us. It's Christmas time. It's chilly, but the sun is shining, and we are thankful for that. We'd also say a praise for the moisture that we had uh, a few days ago. We pray for Mary Bradley. Uh, she is uh, scheduled for another <coughs> operation on January the 13th. So uh, be with her and her family as this time draws near. We pray for Rusty's mom and dad. We pray for Richard. We pray for Robert Henderson. We pray for Daniel and Brian. That's an unspoken prayer for those two. We pray for Daisha. We pray for Adeline and Ani. We pray for Dot. We pray for health care workers uh, in our state today. We pray for Liz. And we pray for the LaPlante the family because of the death in that family. Karen Dewberry has asked for prayer for her brother and sister-in-law. Uh, they've been uh, diagnosed as positive for the virus, and they're experiencing some, some uh, symptoms at, at this time. So be with that family as they undergo this particular situation. We continue to pray for the truckers. Tom Chadwick and James Cameron. And yes, I continue to pray, as I do every Sunday, for our troops, wherever they may be stationed in the world, in uniform. We pray for our nation, and we pray for the leaders of our nation. All these things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand for our song, the birthday of the king.
like that song. I gotta see them sing. <laughs> I look out, you guys. I watch. <laughs> a lot of people are like this. <laughs> you can hold both nice. words. Right, Jose? <laughs> <laughs> All right, any no birthdays, no anniversaries, so we're good. Good. All right, good deal. Okay, remember board meeting is right after, second room back in the hallway there. We'll be there shortly. And Tony, if you would, come up and close us with a word of prayer. Oh, and one other thing. Remember, even though it seems early, next week is Christmas Sunday. So, because Friday following is Christmas. So, we'll have our uh, Christmas sermon. So, anybody you know that's a CNEer. That just comes Christmas and Easter. Uh, <laughs> next week is the week. <laughs> All right. We'll continue with the love theme. Dear Lord, do let us remember not just not at the time of your birth, but as we go on through this whole year, through the rest of our lives, that we do remember to love our neighbors as we do love ourselves. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, I